때. 오 와우. 아 대왕지 you're coming up live. Just uh, you can go onto the YouTube channel and probably just sign in with our account there so that uh, you can then also look at the chat. Yep, I'm already in. Signed okay. in as well. Wow, a lot of old friends, seniors. Oh, Nikhil, Shaitan Sharma is there. Shaitan Sharma is there. Yes. Sharma yes. Is there. Yep. yes. <laughs> and Durgesh is there also. And Jonathan. And we have <laughs> Shaitan Dari. Good morning. Wow. And children too. Lovely. Mahi. <laughs> That's lovely, a lovely, lovely t-shirt. I want that t-shirt with Astro Boy <laughs> on it. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. And there's a story to that, uh, Chetan, which Sergio will. You will wait. Ask, you will wait. Ask ah. Sergio later. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay, Tony ji, let's let's start off. Yeah. All right. So, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's time to kick off a fantastic and exciting sessions with a uh, session with uh, a friend, Sergio. Uh, who is joining us from overseas? Uh, it's late in the evening for him there. In fact, late at almost uh, approaching uh, uh, late night. Uh, but uh, his infectious energy is such that uh, you know <laughs> he's uh, he's got us up and early, uh, uh, hitting hitting uh, you know this this uh, lovely online meeting uh, with the Animation Society of India. Thank you, Sergio. Welcome to a session with the Animation Society of India. And we are honored to have you here. Uh, deeply, deeply honored and uh, humbled that uh, a person like you, I know you are really busy. Uh, at your young age, you are uh, giving <laughs> all the oldies a run for their money, uh, which in itself is a huge, huge inspiration. You have mm -hmm. a fantastic fan following all over the world and uh, India is no far behind. Uh, we have, uh, most of us have grown up on... Uh, uh, you know, watching your work, admiring your work, and being completely bowled over by uh, the kind of work that you've been doing over the years. Oh. So I'm not going to take too much time for introductions. Uh, suffice <laughs> to say that those of uh, those of us uh, who are new to the Animation Society of India, uh, welcome. Uh, this is a society that is a voluntary society. All of us are professionals who have been running, uh, organizing events for the benefit of the community. And uh, we have, uh, uh, over the past 20 years, uh, we started in 2001, and over the past 20 years, we've uh, gone through uh, numerous uh, uh, festivals, we've gone through numerous workshops, uh, interactive sessions. Of course, they have always been physical and one-on-one uh, uh, you know, -on -one live sessions uh, with speakers. And uh, with the pandemic in place, uh, I mean, every crowd cloud, I guess, has a silver lining. And the silver lining for us is that we suddenly we got the opportunity to get a lot of speakers from all over the world uh, fairly easily, I may say so, because uh, I think everybody wants to uh, be within the community. I think that that, that desire to, sh to share, to exchange ideas and to just be with each other is, is something that's innate in all of us. So uh, TASI has been organizing since the last uh, month or so. We've, uh, we've gone through uh, various sessions. We've got exciting sessions coming up as well. And uh, uh, if you get on to our website, there is a uh, regular update that we keep sending to all people. If you are not subscribed on our mailing list, please go and do that so that uh, you will be uh, up to date on uh, the new uh, sessions that we have planned. So I'm going to hand this over now to a fellow uh, committee member and currently the honorary secretary of the society. Uh, sounds very officious, sounds very big, but it's just another thankless job that all of us are doing. Uh, Vaibhav Ji, Vaibhav Kumaresh, uh, please take it on and uh, be the moderator for the session. All of you can share your questions. Please uh, give them a little guidance, Vaibhav, on that as well. Yes, and, uh, that we are also live on YouTube. Uh, so if in case uh, you do uh, happen to know people who may not have been able to join us today, you can point us, point them to our YouTube channel and they can then go through the recording and not miss out on this fantastic opportunity. So with that, I'm going to slink into the background. Thank you, Sergio, once again. Welcome to the Animation Society of India on a gracias. bright Saturday morning for us. Gracias, gracias, amigo. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Tony ji. और एक्साइटमेंट में ऐसा फुदक रहा हूँ आप लोग सब फुदक रहे हैं मुझे पता है तो वन थिंग दैट आई जस्ट वांटेड टू ऐड दैट आई एम लाइक कन्फेशन दैट यू नो इन टर्म्स ऑफ टेक्स्ट एज एज अ किड रीडिंग बुक्स आई वाज ऑलवेज एलर्जिक आई थिंक समथिंग सम मैन्युफैक्चरिंग डिफेक्ट बट 
like the visuals were the were the exciting part like even at nid when i used to study there the i remember that the maximum time i visit the uh, nid library was to uh, go for the next edition of mad and and i'm sure like me all of you would have similar stories to isi khushi mein hum log swagat karte hain hamare diggaj raja dhiraj shansha zille ilahi cartoon naresh विश्व विख्यात कार्टूनिस्ट सर्गियो अरागोने आपका स्वागत है सर्गियो बहुत शुक्रिया बहुत शुक्रिया लवली लवली सो सर्जियो आई आई थिंक आई एम श्योर मेनी ऑफ यू नो about sergio so today we'll have a very very informal conversation you know sergio is not going to share anything on his screen or anything if he has to share anything he will create it and show us that's what he told <laughs> us like tony ji said it's almost midnight and one sabse gazab ki baat that as soon as we finish our session say in an hour and a half sergio is going to turn 83 years old oh. and he's still sitting there and he's yeah. he's going to work another 3 4 hours like he he works till 2 o'clock 3 o'clock in the morning yeah. and he's yeah. he has his comics to work on he has to finish lot of work with him and he's taken out this time for us so <laughs> and, and it's sergio at in india it is also teachers day for us so i'm sure all of us are going to learn loads today from you and just you know soak in all your all your energy uh, <laughs> so uh, sergio uh, i think he, he, sergio has had a very very exciting childhood you know he was born in spain and he had to very at a very early age you know i'm i'm sure he also may not remember he he's is he shifted to france and after the world war they had to migrate to mexico because uh, mexico was inviting uh, you know they were open to immigrants from spain so there was a lot of action very very early in his life and i think in mexico you know his is is life started and uh, at around 20 25 he he went to the us so i think sergio it will be so nice if you could just tell us a small you know very less little about about your growing up years and how this bug of drawing you know got into you well it's a uh, it was doing that doing the world that we had to live because the life in france become became very difficult for refugees because France barely could maintain their own people and we have fought Franco who was an ally of Hitler so they were after us so we had to leave and uh, fortunately Mexico opened its arms to all the refugees from Spain who had um fought Franco and when we arrived the government gave us opportunities to leave and that was just enough but when you are a refugee all the time you don't know the people my first language was french because my parents figured it out that eventually i was going to move to a spanish speaking country so they pursued that i learn french so i spend the whole time at home and when you are at home like now you draw so i spend all my childhood drawing in the time that i was drawing little soldiers and everything that i remember and there was no television then there was very few things on the movies when i went, they took me to the movies i could see cartoons animated cartoons so my memory kept all these images and i kept drawing and drawing and drawing and i guess that's what it was it was something that came easy to me i was late talking because i by when i was i i was afraid you know even though they were speaking spanish mexican spanish is different it's not that different but it's like like in india you have many many dialects Accent. same thing yes. but eventually we i never stopped drawing and i'm still doing what i did when i was a kid exactly the same i am at home and i draw and uh, i think my own ideas and um, so that was the beginning yeah that is just uh, being afraid <laughs> okay being afraid yeah i think there was an incident when your parents left you alone at home and they had gone out and what happened when they came back i think i killed a cat no 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 no, no. <laughs> i i have, i have done a lot of things on the walls <laughs> you know and um, so they when they went visit somebody they always took me and they they just gave me paper and pencil and i would sit behind the sofa and the whole night i was drawing i didn't care so yeah. i was an easy boy to be taking care of 
<laughs> I'm still am. <laughs> How old were you then, Sergio? Uh, I don't remember, but no, <laughs> oh, I, was, That's I arrived uh, uh, ready for my first year of school. I went to school in France, but it was like a preschool, like kindergarten and the first grade. So uh, when I arrived to Mexico, I had to repeat the first grade again. So, so about that age, right. you know, so right. I, uh, I went to school, uh, learned who, easily. I didn't have to pay too much attention because I was drawing in class. All my school books, they have little cartoons on the borders, like I do in MAD, <laughs> the corners. Yes. They're still, uh, I'm still doing the same thing that I did when I was on the third grade, but now they pay me for it, so it's great. <laughs> great living, yes. That's right, that's right. Okay, so we have, uh, we've got like, uh, you know, some people are already brimming with questions over here, and uh, I, I see that there are some... Uh, uh, people are joining us, in fact, from all over the world, which is which is uh, really really exciting. Uh, so, do you want to? Would you like to take a couple of questions, Sergio? Sure, whatever. I mean, uh, all right, I'm here. Yes. Yeah, so, I'm uh, yours. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So, let, let us make the most of it. I'm going to start out. The first question is from Sigma Edits, uh, asking that, sir, please guide us on the topic of character making. Uh, I mean, whatever. Let's let's uh, let's just uh, see. Any any thoughts on designing characters or or creating new characters? What uh, what is uh, is there a separate approach? That no, you have no, to no. That? It's, it's, it's absolutely a, a good question, but yes. because it depends of what you're doing. When when uh, I never thought about it, I drew one way, people like it, and I continue drawing that way. The only thing that I care is that there is a unity of characters. I don't like a character that has a round face and then they put another character that looks like a football. It doesn't fit there. It has to be a harmony, like in everything. It's like if you have a beautiful garden and suddenly you put an ugly sculpture in the middle, it doesn't go there. Same thing with the style, with character design. You try to make it so it's a harmony on the visual, a harmony. So if you have a character, try to stay in the same style. When we are a kid, when we're very young, we draw whatever we see. We, we do Donald Duck, and then we do Bugs Bunny, and then we do Superman. Anything comes to our head. But when you start developing a style, you start looking at cartoonists that you admire. When I was a kid, there was cartoonists. There was an Argentinian cartoonist called Oski. And I thought, that, that was fantastic. So I started copying Oski. And the advantage of them is that all the characters fit their style. Suddenly you are feel comfortable in their field. You know, it is it's balanced. And suddenly you continue and then you discover another cartoonist, like I discovered an American called Virgil Parch, VIP, VIP. And I love his noses. He had pointy noses. So suddenly all my cartoons have pointy noses. All of them, I thought they were terrific looking. So I said, point, but I did pointy noses to all of them, not only one, all of them. So slowly you keep changing. And one day you have your own style. So you develop something that is comfortable to you and is harmonious together. Don't, and don't try to say, oh, this is what is now. Oh, this is what is now we have to do. Be true to yourself. You know, I, 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 I see a lot of people, they want to make it very modern. And like in, in, in the many of the modern shows, and suddenly they forget the most important part, the, the story. The story has to be good. You cannot have characters that they keep jumping all over ah, well, and stretch and all that. If the story is not there, you have to have story. So there's a lot of things that they have to be there on. On the creating a style, I think. Sergio, going okay. back to your childhood, you never had any formal education in art, right? No. In fact, no. you studied architecture. Correct. Also, it goes back to being an immigrant. See, parents or the people who are an immigrant, they have to prove that immigration works. If you go to another country, you have to have a, to prove a reason. We left you, but we are going to be good. We're going to represent the best that we can do. So all the sons of the parents move to another country for the, for the sons, for the daughters and sons. They want them to be better. 
because they know the, they have a state in a in a bad political situation, the son is going to suffer. So when you emigrate, the great thing they can do is give their sons a good education. So my parents thought I was going to be an engineer. They didn't care if I like to draw. My son is going to be an engineer. So I had to say, OK, I'm going to be an engineer. I went to college and I went to engineering college. And about a month later, I go to my father and says, Papa, I don't understand a word. I cannot be an engineer. Oh, that was so bad. <laughs> but he, I told him that architecture is more towards the arts and creation than the mathematics of it. So he says, well, that's all right if you're going to do it. So oh. whew, I, I went to architecture school. I didn't want to be an architect. Never interested about it because I spent all college drawing cartoons. So it's, it's a, but I had to do it for my family. You know? So yes, you, you get an education. You know what's the best part of college? The people that you meet there. You, you meet people that they want to be writers, the people who want to be in the other fields, and they have a, a political point, a, a mind about. So you spend more time in the coffee house talking with people from other branches of your college, learning and finding these people fascinating and learning. And, and through a life, you, they become your friends. So the problem being a cartoonist, if you start very young, is that once you sit here, once you get your pen, that's it. You sit here from nine to five, no chance to go out. No chance to learn, except that you're very strong and you are self-taught and you continue reading or using your telephone now, whatever is the modern things. I'm still very old fashioned. Uh, I'm very bad with the computers, but uh, I think don't, don't hurry up, learn. And one of the important thing is taking the career as seriously as a doctor takes his. Because a doctor doesn't say, Oh, I want to be a doctor. Hey, you let me take your appendix out. Says, wait a minute, you haven't learned anything. I, I don't care. I'm a doctor now. I, I, I can do it. I'm very good. My friends and my family say I'm very good at doctor. So give me your appendix. And pff, you kill the guy. So they go to school many years. <laughs> so cartooning is the same thing. Give yourself a career if there's no school. Learn anatomy. Learn perspective. Learn color. Watch other people. Ask questions. And when you think you're ready, get into it. Because once you're in it, you are in it. That's the end of it. You are it. So don't rush it. Learn, be good, and take my job away. <laughs> That's the idea. Take, take my job. job away. Yes, yes. Yeah. You need when competition. I, yeah, when I entered mad, a lot of people didn't get jobs because I took it. Oh, yes. But I was ready. I was ready. Yes, so we have uh, we have Abhijit Kini here with us, uh, another accomplished uh, cartoonist, uh, uh, an artist who's, who's done uh, very well for himself in the cartoon, uh, you know, comic uh, area. Hi, Sergio, Abhijit. Sergio, that's Abhijit. That's Abhijit. And, uh, Abhijit, very glad to meet you. Yes, and Abhijit has a lovely question. Uh, he, he wants to know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Abhijit, show it, show it again. Yes. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Are those your cartoons in the back? Do the mic. Do the mic. They're very good. You see, there's, Thank a, you. there's a unity in character. You can see that the guy has a story, and none of them goes out of it. They all belong in the same universe. That's I, must say, I must say, I've been very, very inspired by your work, Sergio. Uh, right. From a very, very young age, I love drawing the crowd scenes, the crowds that you draw, you know, the many people that you draw. That's that's my favorite from all the times I've read. I always used to love reading the marginal uh, thinking department, and I've collected all your gurus, your mighty Magnor, uh, your <laughs> Comic Con specials. I mean, uh, this is my fanboy moment. This is, this is the oldest one I have. But this is amazing. Thanks, Tassi, for having this. 
Oh, let me, uh, so let Abhijit, me, uh, let me Abhijit. get to, uh, let me get to Abhijit's question uh, quickly. Abhijit, could you mute your mic? Mute I yourself. think there's a lot yeah, of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in, he's in space or something. It's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, like yeah. a spaceman, Abhijit. So quickly, Abhijit's question that I find over here, which I think is a lovely question, uh, is uh, how did the marginal thinking department in Mar in MAD start off uh, for you, Sergio? Well, uh, when I went to MAD. Uh, I have gone, when I went to the United States, I didn't speak any English at all. Uh, and I did have about $20, that was it. I, and I, I figured it out if I want to succeed in the United States, because I left Mexico, I had already a, a very important magazine, a weekly page there, but it didn't uh, had enough circulation and it didn't pay that much. So I knew that in the United States, they pay much better. So when I went there, I figured out I'm going to go to the smaller magazines and start from the bottom up. Once I establish myself, people will see what I do and then I'll go to the big magazine. I was to give me my time. But every time I went to a magazine, they look at my work and says, this is crazy. I don't understand it. This is horrible. Where are the words? In that time, all the humor in the United States was like in England, very, or, very many words about it all the time, words, words. And I, I did pantomime cartoons with no words. So they will look at a cartoon and they look for the words. What are the words? No words, it's a joke. Ah, this is crazy, you should go to MAD. But I knew MAD, I was a fan of MAD. I love what they did and they didn't do the cartoons I did. They did the satire of movies, satire of television, satire of comics. And I didn't do satire, I did magazine cartooning. So I went almost in desperation because everybody told me go to MAD. But I went there to meet the people. I wanted to meet Antonio Proias who does Spy Be Spy. I want to meet whoever was there. And when I arrived, they liked my work. And they say, oh, this is fantastic. We're going to do a two page article about astronauts. And oh, you have other things here uh, for cover ideas. This is very good for a cover idea. So, the first day I sold a lot of material. And one of the editors who was there in the future uh, told me, he says, well, bring another article like the one you did about the astronauts. And I said, well, I, what do you like? He says, well, uh, you have a couple here about motorcycle cops, policemen in motorcycles. So bring us an article about a mad look at motorcycle cops. I was staying in a very, I wouldn't even call it a hotel. It was a, a place where ladies go for the night and they leave. It was very cheap. So I'm, I'm there and next morning I am at the offices. And when they arrive to MAD, I says, what are you doing here? Before they open, I said, I have your article here. And they, I don't think they understood my English. So they opened the office and we went in and I had more than 20 cartoons about motorcycle cops. And they bought it right there. They, they were amazed because in, in other countries, they take much time to think jokes. But in one night, I, I thought it more. And then I saw another article about, uh, I think it was about football or something. And suddenly they tell me, well, we have enough material for a few months so you can go back to Mexico. <laughs> I said, I'm not going, I, I'm doing very good here. Yeah. And so I figured out something that they, they could have that they was not on the magazine. And on the borders in the magazine, they had little sayings, you know, in, in, uh, ah, in, ponytail. in, in mad on the little corners, they have text words. And I will ask what this means here. And they says, well, have you seen the movie so-and-so? I said, no, but then you will understand it. And then he hit me. If I do cartoons that everybody will understand, they don't have to go back and they will be all also forever there. Yeah. So I filled the page with little cartoons. I drew them very little and paste them up on the, on the magazine and brought it to them. And uh, later I learned that the, 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 the editor who was Mr. Felstein said, these are very clever, but I don't think anybody can come with 20 cartoons every issue without words that size. So let's hire until he runs out of ideas. Well, I'm still doing it. This is over 50 years ago. <laughs> Lovely. 
Lovely. So that was the, the real story of the marginals. Yes. I want to tell the audience that Sergio did a course in pantomime. Yes. He he taught himself, you know, formally. Uh, Sergio, you why was that? Well, um, uh, there was a, a. I love pantomime. I have always loved it on the theater. I love Marcel Marceau. I love uh, the old the old silent cartoons and uh, anime uh, actors. And one of the, when Marcel Marceau was in Mexico, and because I spoke French, I, the theater group at university went to see the, the, uh, the, the pantomimes of Marcel Marceau, and I went as for, to translate for them what he was saying. I didn't have to because one of his assistants was Alejandro Jodorowsky. And I'm very sure that if you follow comics and, uh, movies on the underground like El Topo or the Sacred Mountain or Santa Sangre. He is a, a very fantastic, not only comic book writer for with Moebius about all the, the source printed in France, but a great, a great mind. And he opened a school of pantomime. So I decided to, to learn pantomime, not to become an actor, but to apply it to my work. Because I figured it out that if you know your body the way that minds know it, about its weight, about its action, about reactions, I could apply it to my work. And I said, this is what I want to join, not to become an actor. And I said, fantastic, very good. So I joined and I learned a lot of pantomime. I introduced Alejandro and the pantomimes in the theater. I will come out in white face with a white easel and I will draw what the mimes were going to do. Marcel Marceau used words, a little sign that says the magician. And then the, the guy will do the magician and do his act. But I drew it. So all of it was pantomime. So I, I was fascinated and Alejandro was my teacher. Yes. My guru. Yeah. Here, here is a lead, leading question uh, to, to, to this, Sergio. Uh, we've got uh, Mayur Mistri who wants to know that you've done comic strips on so many subjects, uh, you know, from doctors to sports to romance and uh, so forth. Uh, but your take on all these subjects is hilarious. How do you get the inspiration or such detailed understanding on the subjects? I cannot tell you because then I'll give you my secrets. No, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's just something, look, I, people can teach art. People can teach cartooning. You can teach animation because it has certain logic in it. You know, drawing has a logic in it. But humor, sadly, is something that you have or you don't have. It's like a, a sense of uh, not being afraid to talk in public or not being afraid of snakes, whatever it is. Is something in that. You have a sense of humor, and with the time, it becomes like a routine. You think of any subject, and then you figure it out what doesn't belong there, or what will be a result of something that doesn't fit, or something that it will make you cry, but you make it humorous. So you go from there. You see, and, and also you learn from the people who did it before you. You see something very funny and then you realize, well, uh, a very bad example, a, a French cartoonist, which I adore them all, uh, Tetsu, Chaval, Moss, all of them, they did pantomime cartoons and I look at, and I remember one, for, for instance, there's a parade and uh, all of them have guns. So I figured out, well, what about if one has an umbrella instead of a, of a gun? So you draw it. Or you think, well, right now a bird is standing on top of a rifle. You think of an absurdity, something that they doesn't fit there, something that you don't expect. Because I think laughter is a, a, a notion that you have when they get you by surprise and you get scared or you get afraid and you laugh. You know, you see somebody falling, you're not really enjoying that the guy's falling, but <laughs> it, it's a reaction, it's a physical reaction, you laugh. So when he got you by surprise, you laugh. So you try to get people to laugh at something that is new, you know. Tuniji, I just want to add here that Sergio does a lot of homework for any subject that he gets into. 
no we know him as like he's is known as the world's fastest cartoonist and all that but he's a writer he's a sculptor he's done jewelry we know that he's formally studied architecture but he gets into every subject that like sergio you said that you also sculpt your own props right yes. like, on, on wood uh, yes uh, well it's it's a need uh, it's very hard to think ideas when you have a pencil in your hand why because you start drawing so but if i don't draw i can think straight without having to draw it so i i write notes to later develop it so when i draw it it's fresh because if you write it, if you draw it before and you redraw it again to see how it looks and then you draw it again for the final you have lost the spontaneity of the drawing so i write it by hand you know, wow. instead of drawing it so okay. when i when i'm thinking i have to hand my hand busy so i start carving things uh, uh, as we were talking the, the, the other day, yes. I, carve pen, I carve pens. I take a piece of wood and I carve a pen. Lovely. It's another pen. Yes. And another pen. Oh. And another pen. You know. <laughs> and another pen. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just carve little pens, you know. Yeah. So I, I, carve, I carve whales. You know, little whales. Uh, little, little things. And... The application that 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 uh, Vaiv was talking about is that when you draw in a continuity, you don't want the brain to get distracted from the story. So if you do, if you draw something that doesn't belong there, automatically your subconscious that is following a story, it jars it because that thing doesn't belong there. Like an anachronism, uh, something that doesn't belong. You, your mind will tell you that, that it breaks that, 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 that continuity. So when I'm doing a, sh a, a, a boat, a ship, I realize that if I, if I build ships, and when we were talking before, I told him that I was going to show him one of my models, and I brought it in, you know, so. Oh, wow. Well. That's one of them, you know, it's, uh, it's called the Joa, the Goa. Uh, it was one of Amundsen ships when he went to. Antarctica. So I, I build it, you know, and uh, you add little things. And when you're doing that, suddenly the idea that you were working, so you put it aside and you write what you were doing. Right. And hours later or a day later, you continue doing this, you know, adding little things. And once now, if I need to draw a ship, I take any of mine and I see that perspective. Oh, that has to go like that. And I use it a lot now. Every yeah. time I, I draw a ship, I take one of my models and I go like that. She was going like that. And I can see exactly where I want my ship to go. Right. Many, sometimes a lot of people don't pay attention to that because they get very lazy and says, I have to deliver this job. I can take the liberties that I want because I'm doing my own comic, so I don't have to worry too much about that. So. Right. This is one of the models that I was talking to you about. Lovely, lovely. Sergio, what is that made of? Is it wood and cloth? It's or... wood. Wood. The sails are cloth. The threads are threads. Uh, you buy a kit. You, you go at the uh -huh. store. And it comes completely apart. You have to cut the wood. And uh, you follow the plans. Like you've got airplanes, you know, the yes. little models. Yes. But instead of being plastic, it's in wood. And you have to look at old pictures. Uh, and uh, when I went to, to a comic book convention in Norway, uh, there's a museum, and this ship is there. So all the people says, oh, let's go to see that. And he says, no, 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 no. We have to go to Oslo because there's a museum, there's a ship that I built, and I have to see it. So I went to see the Goa, and it was there. And it looked exactly like it, but much bigger. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's great, great. So okay, uh, leading, leading... Those things. Sorry. Yes. Yes, leading to this, uh, uh, a couple of interesting questions here. One, I think, is in from outer space because uh, it says Galaxy A7 2016. So I don't know from which... Uh, <laughs> okay, Tony Ji, uh, yes. I, I think I know Galaxy. And uh, I'm very happy to say that m most of us know the Amul Butter campaign, right? That we see. Yes. So Galaxy, I think, is Manish Zaveri. Please correct me, Manish. Uh, you could unmute me uh, yourself, and you know, he Manish is a is an artist who writes the the Amul Butter campaign for I think over two decades now. 
so we are very happy that he's on board uh, sergio it's a very very popular advertising campaign in india uh, so, but but i may be wrong so galaxy please yeah yeah, yeah i think you're right uh, i didn't even know that it is uh, galaxy uh, sergio i am a huge fan of mad magazine and uh, amongst all okay. the galaxy of mad uh, uh, of uh, mad cartoonists you are my favorite I must be having around 500 Mad magazines at home, and <laughs> more than I have. <laughs> and my daughter is uh, 16 years old, and uh, she's also taken to sketching. And I keep showing her all the marginals. And I said, wow. look at the amount of stories that uh, uh, that that have been packed into such a tiny little thing. <laughs> you know oh, what great. I want to thank ask you? Thank you. That, uh, you know, in advertising, uh, whenever um, I have an idea which gets which I like, but which gets rejected, I save it. I said that I'm sure that there'll be somebody. who will you know use it later on so uh, does it sometimes happen with you too that you know you've given some ideas earlier which weren't taken for whatever reason but you save it and say that okay i'm sure that somebody will uh, like it and it will be like of day again uh, no i i'm very fortunate <laughs> 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 oh, no. No, no. It's, yes, it, it, it happens. You you present an idea that you think it is going to be terrific, and they says, "Well, no, that's not exactly where we want to go." So you put it aside, and suddenly it happens that whatever you wanted, and the US is here. I have an idea before these guys do it, and they buy it. You're totally right. It happens. Yes. So it's it's many writers. They 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 do a book. or a cartoon and they bring it over to an editor a publisher and maybe the publisher says well not now and they get very depressed and they don't write again this is a big mistake because there's so many reasons first they don't know if you wrote it or you stole it from somebody and if they buy it from you they're going to get sued that's why they need agents second they don't know they want people who can continue working for them and bring things on the style that they are accustomed so you bring an idea they like it but they don't know if it's yours or you cannot come with another one so they reject it so you but they ask you to bring another one so once you bring another one and another one they will buy the first one with no problem whatsoever so that happens a lot you do something they don't buy it don't get the press they know what they doing they don't care about that particular piece they care about the readers maybe you don't know the readers they know the readers better or the viewers or whatever it is now with the computers so you have to say well okay i'm going to accept what you say not take it as a rejection of your work because it's not it's a rejection of something that they need or they don't need if you continue doing stuff in your own style in what you do and you think you're better than the guys before you eventually they will buy it with no doubts no no doubts even you have to to stick to it you have to continue and try to improve yes yes no problem but it happen a lot things that you press and then you bring them again yes 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 thank you okay uh, sir you this is a very interesting question here uh, it's not really a question it's an observation from a uh, mona vijaykar uh, hi mona nice to have hi, you mona. here with us uh, mona uh, says that uh, you know your humor resonates across generations and that is something that uh, you know 83 is a very young age uh, i can see that on your face uh, how do you how do you mean it <laughs> how do you manage to keep uh, uh, you know yourself relevant to the changing generations because uh, you know jokes and times and situations and people change so what is the secret there just look at the at what they wearing and use the same old gag just change the clothes of what they wearing then and, <laughs> and then <laughs> no, no. say here if i can... yes no no <laughs> say here if i can get my sons to laugh at my jokes that would be really something yes <laughs> and you managed to get Whoa. the whole world to laugh <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you no it's you know humor is universal it has it transcend time transcend everything the only thing that changed an example is when i used to draw a secretary we used to have a typewriter in front of her 
but suddenly there were no more typewriters. There were computers. So once I put a computer, everybody starts saying, what is the secretary watching television? <laughs> because they, they couldn't associate yet. So I keep doing a bad look at secretary so I could do jokes about the changing from computers to, uh, from typewriters to, to, to computers. But once the computer was generic and everybody knew about computers, I have never drawn a typewriter in my life anymore. But what changed was the object. The jokes about it has changed. About in Mexico, we never learned how to type because that was a woman's job. So men will never type. Now kids are three years old. The typing is, is universal. It's a different perception of things. I cannot draw a, a woman doctor. Why? Because the minds of people think she's a nurse. So when you're doing a joke about a patient and a female doctor without words, the first thing they think is, why is she a nurse doing that or something? Now, everybody's really getting used to female big doctor. So now you can do it with no problem. But a few years ago, you couldn't because you will distract from the joke because Very they will think something else, you know? So these little things change completely. Uh, Thank you. It's very hard for me to, to draw now uh, the telephone before it was comfortable. There was a big apparatus like, like these ones that I have on my desk still, you know? But now these little things, I have to substitute everything for this. Alarm clocks, telephones, cameras, uh, observer telescopes to watch the Andromeda <laughs> strain. Everything is this. Yeah. And uh, it's very confusing. So when I have to draw now masses, I used to draw a guy with a camera and people, but now I have to put everybody going like this, taking a picture. Everybody knows that the guy's taking a picture when it's like that. When it's like that, he's talking. When he's here like this. Wow. So there's little nuances on the graphics that goes with the times. So yeah, you have yeah. no you 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 have to be careful not to become antiquated on your props. But the idea of the gag, I think, is universal. Don't you think, Mona? That that's absolutely, absolutely. No, thank you so much. Oh my pleasure. Hey, this is so interesting. This is so who would have thought that you had to switch and use that same object in many different ways? That's amazing. Oh. Yeah. It, it's, uh, you have to be observant about it. You don't want to suddenly disappear yeah. of the field. You, you're going to be there with all the young people. I, I love what the young people are doing. And I uh, observe and I say, oh, that's very interesting. I'm going to do it. I'm not copying him. I just taking from him what he knows better than I do. Yeah. And I, yeah. I'm, I learn every day about things. So you, 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 were, you yes. were mentioning that, you know, people and observing people is so important. You know, you, you enjoy that process. So do yes. you consciously keep in touch or, you know, do you travel a lot? Do you meet people a lot? Like, do you enjoy that? Yes, very much. I'm very, very fortunate that I have that uh, traveling bug all my life since I was a very young man. And uh, fortunately, you know, one thing about Mad Magazine, every year until the publisher Bill Gaines passed away a few years ago, every year he will invite all the cartoonists, all the writers, the editors, to a trip. We went overseas, many places. We went to African safaris. We went to Tahiti. We went to Greece. We went to Europe more than 20 times. All paid, fantastic. And you meet the people, you meet the cartoonists from there. And it's a way of community. So I have enjoyed that. My wife also loves to travel. And with the conventions now, as you know, uh, um, Vaibi, Vaibo invites me to the Indian to go there many times, you know, yes, yes. and it's, yeah. it, it has become very difficult because every country, not only country, every state of every country has a comic book convention. And uh, I, when I was younger, I was more comfortably to travel. So I went to many of them. I went to Angoulême, to Luca, to Spain, to, to many, many conventions. So. I, I think that before the pandemic, I was trying flying overseas at least two or three times a year. So it's, uh, it's easy for me to say countries that I haven't been there, right. that the ones I've been there, you know, it's, uh, right, right. I love to meet the people. Oh, it's right, amazing. Right. 
Sargi, okay, we have uh, sorry, sir, just uh, Webber, on... ji, we have a total of uh, just uh, just uh, shot in the arm. We have a total of close to 170 people in attendance right now across Zoom as well as on YouTube. So, yay wow, for that. Uh, lovely, yeah. lovely. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> in in mm-hmm. one such uh, convention, you had met uh, Osamu Tezuka as well. Yes. Right. We were talking about that. Yes, Astro Boy. <laughs> oh, I love Astro Boy. And, and what happened is that in one of the conventions in San Diego, I was walking. And I look in a booth, and there's this little old man with a little beret and the glasses sitting all by himself with another Japanese man next to him. And I look at him, and I look at the cartoons in the background, and he was Dr. Tezuka. And he was, oh, oh. I went to him, and I, I couldn't talk. I was fan number one, you know, like, oh, no, 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 no. so I, I asked him, and I knew all his work because I really have followed him since the beginnings in Mexico. And uh, he was delighted, of course. And, and once I was talking to him, a lot of people started approaching. And I was telling them, you don't know who this gentleman is. He's more famous than Walt Disney. And I was in the floor, in his knees going like that. Ay, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, he, he, I asked him if he, if he could give me an autograph. You know? And what he did was this. I told you I was going to show you. Oh, yes. Wow. Wow. Ooh. Wait, let me just spotlight. Wow. So that's Kimba. Know, that's Kimba with, with Astro Boy. Yes, and I know it's a cartoonist over there who's going to faint because if he liked my t-shirt, He's going to like this. <laughs> that was in 1980. 1980. Oh, wow. wow. And then I was invited to visit his studio and uh, the museum that they have now. Uh, it is a great, great, great spirit. Oh, what a great cartoon. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Ah. Uh. So, Sergio, here is a, a, a question that is uh, doing the rounds. Uh, t- uh, you know, a lot of people are interested in Guru. Yes. And, uh, you know, there are, <laughs> yes, there are, there are questions uh, which are specific. There are questions about, uh, you know, the whole world that you have created there. So, I'm going to start off one uh, with uh, Seanak. Seanak wants to know, uh, I read a Guru comic where Witches Conclave has a massive Guru transformation. It was a super chaotic. It was super chaotic to read. How do you think of this chaos? And uh, I'm going to lead that on with another one from Chetan Sharma, a brilliant animator, one of our uh, gems in Indian animation. Chetan wants to know about Guru and the whole world that you have created. Uh, it's uh, he feels it's simply too brilliant. So oh, thank uh, you, thank you. <laughs> that's, that's, there he is. Chetan. There he is. Chetan, that's once Chetan. more, once more. Yes. <laughs> oh. Good, good, good. Well, oh, <laughs> bravo, bravo. He's paying my mortgage. Yes. Chetan, unmute yourself. Unmute, unmute yourself. Ah, there he is. There he is. Yes. Also, you see, yeah. I, I didn't, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't meet him ever, but uh, I needed to have him on my wall. So I just took one of his drawings of, uh, with himself with Astro Boy and <laughs> I, and I put it yes. up. I mean, it's. Oh, one. I, I look at him every day. You yes, know, it's a great, great inspiration. Yes, I, yes, indeed. Incredible. Wow. And I think that your work on Gru, for example, I think ranks up there with all the best work that has ever happened in the comics world. <laughs> and oh, yeah. and I love it to bits. And uh, I think it's an inspiration for many of the things that we are also working on and developing. It's just that world is so beautiful. And it, you mentioned consistency and all the rest of it anyway. But uh, it's just... It's like an upside down look on everything that is Conan the Barbarian or whatever. But it's, I mean, I, somebody also mentioned the chaotic complexity of all that goes on. And I mean, for those who are not familiar, I mean, just uh, the opening layouts themselves are priceless. Uh, the opening pages. Where Chitin, so you're going to show us? Things are going on. Uh, wait, <laughs> Gayatri, please peep in. <laughs> Sergio, that's, that's, that's Gayatri saying hi to you. 
you know chetan and gayatri have one of the oldest uh, animation studios in india called animagic ah. and gayatri is one of the few i think i if i'm not mistaken gayatri the only artist who has uh, from india trained uh, at uh, disney walt disney studios in the us Hi. uh so she yes. was uh, you uh-huh. know very early on in life she had that uh, lovely opportunity so hi uh-huh. gayatri nice to have you guys here Uh, yes, so, indeed. So, uh, yeah. uh, Sergio, if you could take, uh, you know, if you give, give us a little insight will, on, will. on Groove. See, I will. I will. Yeah. Chetan, yeah. hold that steady. Yeah. I'm, I'm wow. just looking for a, a piece of paper. Oh Sergio, my God! Okay. This is good. <laughs> oh my God! This is just one <laughs> example. Every oh. every one of these stories has got some spread which is mind blowing in all that goes on. Like, if you like the mad marginals and everything, it is all of that distilled into this crazy world. and you can keep looking at this page for hours it's like an entire episode of a cartoon film just sitting there in that one page i mean uh, you can just talk about groove for the next hour and i'll be just i, I will show you some drawings that they have not been out yet that i'm i'm working on right now so what what happened with groove is that uh, i was in i was i w- i like comic books i was in a, a big fan of them because i like other things besides the comics i i was never into superhero comics sadly I, they never appealed to me um, but humor comics they did and in mexico we didn't get that many american comics except donald duck we get uh, uh, Bob, uh um, what's her name um uh little lulu you know ah. which is uh, i don't see her but i ha- i have it over there by so little lulu over there and the frame, yes mark <laughs> but many 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 cartoons on humor so i that part we had uh, some mexican called the super sabios and uh, different ones that they were in humor and i like it a lot but in the united states while i was there there was no humor comics they were funny animal comics they were teenager comics they were um uh, but humor humor there was no one except when the underground came out and there was a different subject that i was already too old to participate about drugs and about that modern stuff i i i there were there was not my style so but that was humor and i took a trip to europe for two years to meet european cartoonists this is in the 60s mm. um i wanted to meet all the people who did the uh, pilot and and uh, all the all my heroes to um which i had the honor to meet many many of them so while i was there i realized that in europe like in many parts of the world humor comics are prevalent they like it they sell very well and young people like to read them and then they go into other things so i figured that this is what i want to do i want to do humor comics so i was walking one day in Paris and says okay i have to do a comic about things that they don't have and i realize oh i have a brilliant idea i'm going to do the the twin brother of tarzan tarzan <laughs> it was it was not only one it was twins and one was very stupid and he was not raised by monkeys he was raised by whatever other animal oh my god a great idea he's going to screw up everything and all the animals are going to hate him oh, oh i i thought i had the perfect character and i walk in and in a movie house there's torzon that's the silly tarzan and it was already an animated movie done by a french cartoonist so that idea went away you know so while i was there I realized that they were not barbarian comics. And I I was a fan of um, Asterisk, you know about the the little guys. Yes. And I figured that that's so clever, so well done. All the characters belong to each other. I have to do something, but it has to have because I'm very lazy about drawing cars and buildings and and trains and things. So I figured out barbarians can have dragons, magic, witches, everything. So I start thinking about that. See, in Europe, like in Japan, the cartoonist is the owner of the copyright. When they go to Pilot or to any of the other magazines, they bring the idea with them and says, "We have this idea." He's the writer and the writer. Now the world says, "I'm a writer artist. 
Each one has his own way. They will publish it and the copyright belongs to them. So when whatever decisions have to be made, they have to be their decision. If monies have to be made, they could be shared equally. So I says, that's it. I'm going to do it the European way. So when I arrived to the States, I went to the companies and said, I want to publish my comic book, but I want to own the copyright. And all of them said, no, 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 no. That doesn't happen in the United States. The company owns the copyright. It says, you cannot own the copyright. This is what the author has. No, no. It took me all the way to 1983 to have published more than 12 years trying to sell Gru. My God. Well, they didn't know it was Gru because I wasn't going to tell them. <laughs> I told them I had a very funny comic book and they didn't want to give me the rights. So I didn't even tell them what it was all about. <laughs> until, until Pacific Comics came out and says, we publish it, you owe the rights. And many of the artists, Neil Adams, uh, Joe Kubert, many artists went with this company called Pacific and start publishing. And that's the moment the big companies decide, hey, we can do that. Mm -hmm. So I published about eight issues with Pacific, one with Eclipse, and then Marvel created a new title for them to use and share the copyright with the actor, you know? Mm. So then we did 120 issues of group. Yeah. Without, with no help, no, no, just uh, Mark Evanier who helps me with uh, English and with, uh, he's like my editor. He, he comes with ideas for plots and stuff. He's, he's just an invaluable friend. So, and, and collaborator. Stan Sakai who does Usagi Yojimo, he did a letter and he still does it. Yeah. And Tom Luth who does a color. We never missed a deadline in 10 years with Marvel. Not once, the four of us. And we still do it. We still do it with Pacific. So Google continues. And I think the success is that, talking about anachronisms, we take modern problems and translate them to the old times. We have done comics about gurus, about modern art, about garbage, about anything, subject, television. It took me one year to think the plot for that. I says, I have to make fun of television, but what? <laughs> and suddenly you're watching TV and there's a puppet show. Oh, look, a puppet show. So I went to Mark and says, I have it. We're going to do it with a, with a puppet and the marionette. He loved it because he knows everything about TV. Yeah. We did fun jokes about TV dinners, about the television using toys to make animation. Yeah. <laughs> Everything so that you, happened on TV, you have, we did. You have that little marionette there, right? That wooden puppet that you had created. Oh, the, the glue thing? Yes. Yeah, yes. It's, it's there, is a, I, I, there is a little glue that Sergio well, has sculpted. What happened is a little a... puppet. Henry. That's Henry. <laughs> I think many publishers are no more, but Gru still lives on. In all the world, this toy exists. Yes. <laughs> in Mexico, in Peru, all over Russia, name it. Yes. And they have this, this, uh, this, uh, this fantastic, simple twist on the strings here. Uh, it, it's just fantastic. Look at that. <laughs> you, can, you can be entertained for hours about it. So I figured out that I did do Guru. So I did one and uh, I carved this Guru. You know, it's, uh, and it's going, to, it's going to do the same things with, uh, with these bars. You know, once once I, I put it on the bar, you know, I'm just going to go, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I carve it while I'm thinking ideas. And Thank this you. one, it's mechanical. I, you have to be patient. We, we, I get very excited. Oh, well, I tried to figure out wh what would be the smallest I could do. So I did a, a oh, oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> very tiny one. See? That's before he grew up. Yeah, that's his <laughs> Ruferto. This is a little miniature thing. But this guy, what happened is that the sword... Oh, be patient with me. I mean, uh, yes, it's, yes, thank you. <laughs> it's um, uh, here it is. This goes like this. 
it's so exciting to see these little gems that you're pulling out. Okay, this is part of the sword of Guru, of course. And it goes in here, which is a mechanism that I devise. It goes in here. Sir, here, could you in, hold it inside. slightly higher? Yeah, oh, no, lovely. It goes like this, you know, inside, inside the, the thing. Hold of Guru. <laughs> you know, a little thing. And, and then this is the, the cover of it. So when Guru is upside down, the soul will fall out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it will fall in and out. It's all once it's glue, it'll be fine. But I enjoy things like that because it gives you a break. You know, this Batman. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a. Uh, you cannot do all the time. You cannot think jokes all the time. You have to take a break. Yes. But a break that doesn't take too far away from the creation of things. Yes. Uh, so I do that. I entertain myself here while I have to take a break. So my head is when I watch television while I'm working. But I don't watch new things. I watch very old movies because I know them by heart. <laughs> so I'm listening to them. And then I go and look and my eye go from, from here distance whoop, to the TV. Whoop. So it's an exercise. <laughs> I, I, I start wearing glasses at 70. Wow. So it's a, it's, a, it's a practice. It's a good exercise. Sergio, the, the timeline for you is something different. It's not what it is for us. No, so, well, uh, you're, I, I, you're a different I, species. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I work until very late hours, but I wake up late too. I wake up at 10 and 11, no problem. You know, and uh, but I go to bed wherever I am tired or my wife gets tired of calling me. Sergio, come over. <laughs> I, had to, I had to run to do. Uh, so, Sergio, know? there's another interesting question here. Uh, why did you, uh, this from Arga, uh, Arga Sen Gupta, uh, another artist, uh, lovely uh, and uh, uh, involved in, in teaching these days. Why did you name the main protagonist Guru? Oh, very good question. I wanted to have a barbarian name. <laughs> uh, uh. So I believe me or not, I spend a lot of time going rrr, 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 making noises to see what was a good name for it, you know. And one of them was like Guru, 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 G R O. It sounded perfect. So I went to every telephone directory to see if there was any person called Guru, and I didn't <laughs> find any. So I said, that's a perfect name, Guru. So I call him Guru, and once it was published. We got about 10 letters of group people that they were called group. One of them was a criminal that was in jail. The other one living in, same, in the hometown that I live in, Ohio, and he has a drugstore, and his name was Guru. Oh, it's all people. After all that research you did. <laughs> yes, 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 it's just amazing. So that was basically the, the reason I wanted to give it a, a barbarian name, Guru. Yeah. Awesome. But in, that's in, that's in, Orgo. In, that, yeah, that is uh, Argo, our friend Arga, who just asked you that question. Argo, hello. Well, in Finland, Argo is called Urhu. Oh. I, I don't know what Guru means in Finnish, but it must be a dirty world. <laughs> Uh, okay, there's some, uh, there's some interesting uh, questions that are coming and they're really coming out of the woodwork now. One uh, uh, from Harsh Vardhan. Uh, do you do digital drawing? Or is it all paper, pencil, or pen? No all paper, paper and pencil. All paper and pencil. I, I pencil. Um, this is a, a, a page I'm, I'm working right now. Wow. So I work on pa in paper. I use fountain pens uh, because when I'm drawing, I like movement. And with a dipping pen, you cannot go like that. And with a pen, I can. To, to because of the, of the speed of the silliness. Uh, I don't make mistakes because I use the mistake. If suddenly it's a line up, instead to put the arm down, I put the arm up, you know, because the line is there, yeah. you know. So I use the, the mistakes. Uh, talking about the marginals, this is the size I drew them for them. I send them four pages with marginals like that, you know. Wow. 
and then they and get further reduced. They choose whatever they need. And then next issue, I showed send them more. I sent three pages like that. So basically, can you see them? Yes. 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 Slightly lower. Perfect. Yes. Super. So this is basically it. You know, it's a, it's how I draw. The the math pages are drawn larger right. because the magazine deserves a larger uh, thing. Um, uh, this is the, uh, the one of the latest issue of MAD was dedicated to Al Jaffe. Yeah. Oh, so wow. I did a MAD look at Al Jaffe. Could you please, uh, someone has to mute, mute your mics, please? Please mute your mics. Moriji? Actually, I look at Jaffe. Oh, yes. He is another crazy <laughs> artist. Thank you, sir. Sergio, how was it, you know, collaborating with all these mad people, you know, uh, were you were, were you constantly in touch together? Would you brainstorm together, exchange notes? How was it? No, no, no. Uh, uh, there's, there's two types, like Don Martin, Al Jaffe, Antonio Proias, myself. We come with our own ideas. So we don't intermingle with anybody. Everybody works at home. Before everything that was happening was happening in New York. So in the 60s and 70s, we, we lived in New York and uh, we went to the office and you show your work and then they say yes and then you do it and then you get paid. But the other people have to use the writers written by Frank Jacobs, illustrated by um, somebody else. So mm -hmm. they had to collaborate. Right. And they will, uh, the magazine will give them an idea. We're going to do a takeoff on uh, The Godfather. They thought it was a very good idea. So they tell the writer, you have to write a four page article about The Godfather. So he'll go see the movie, broad ideas, and then they will assign a, a cartoonist. Usually it was Mord Rocker, who was an excellent caricaturist, and he will draw the piece and then they publish it. Uh, with our case, we have to think the ideas and we'll bring it to them and uh, we'll call says, how would you like a mad look at cars? And they, they didn't think about it. So what I did, <laughs> this was published. <laughs> the, I went outside and took pictures. Well, my, my daughter took the pictures of me looking at cars. So it's called a mad look at cars. And all the pictures that I sent is me looking at cars like this, you know, little car. I mean, jeeps uh, okay. expensive cars and then the note was that i wrote to the editor saying better stick to drawing so <laughs> then i then i did that that three or four pages about me looking at cars but the cartoons about cars <laughs> but the, that idea it worked you know and that was suggested to me by mark one day he says hey you have to do that idea it was great that worked. that was one of the first suggestions that uh I, I, I worked with it. That was great. Oh, that was uh, Sergio, how do you, uh, there's another, there's lovely questions that are coming in and I'm going to just like shoot them off one of the, the other. Uh, there is uh, somebody called Figer Peg 2. Uh, okay, interesting name. Figer, uh, hello Figer. Uh, I would like to know how uh, you handle artist block. Do you ever get artist block? And if you do, no? no? Okay. Uh, <laughs> next, next question. Next Perfect. Question. No, 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 no. Let me say why. <laughs> yes. When you're writing, when you're writing, let's say a television show, or you're writing a novel, you can get writing show because you are preoccupied to do it better. So you have suddenly a dialogue between a man and a woman on a on a coffee house, and it's not going the way you want. If that's the only thing you're doing, you're going to have a mental block because that's not coming. And you're going to worry a lot, and then you're going to go, oh my God, I don't get the idea, oh, I get a mental block. But with us, we cannot get a mental block because if I'm not doing mad and I get, um, I don't get the idea that's bothering me, I have an idea about a Jaffe doing this and it doesn't work. So I take it, the start drawing it, glue. And if I get a glue block, I do something, I start carving my knives. <laughs> you know? So nice. I cannot get it because after my mind is clear and I get the idea. So the only su suggestion is don't fret about it. 
it is logical. You are concentrated in doing it better. So forget about it, do something else. It will come. You know, the, 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 there's no, the, the, don't, 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 don't even worry. Of course, the mental block can happen because you're trying to improve something. Says, no, that's not a good ending. You know, you have to think of a good ending, but I don't think past that. I go on something else until I'm like that, a boom, the idea comes. <laughs> no, but don't, 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 don't worry about it, really. Uh, Harish wants to know, uh, what is one of the most challenging work that you have uh, faced so far? Anything that comes to mind? Well, yes, uh, uh, the subjects, I've done a lot of the movies also. I've done Star Wars and I've done many mad satires with ad words for mad. And then they asked me to do one with a very funny comedian who wrote uh, John Frankenstein. Um, it's a, one of the very clever American writers, uh, comedians. And uh, John Frankenstein and uh, the 12 chairs and uh, the producers. I forget his name right now. Well, anyway, he did a movie about silent movie or something. And it was a pantomime movie. And suddenly they asked me to do it. And I sat there thinking, I says, I cannot do this. This is a, a, a movie about pantomime. And how can I pantomime pantomime <laughs> in a movie? That's what I do. So I have to do it. You know? No matter how I break my brain, I says, this is, I cannot do something that is already that funny yeah. and not being able to do satire on the actors or on the producer or on the viewer. I had to do it about the material and it was impossible because it was a pantomime thing. Yeah. This is Mel Brooks. I do. This is Mel, Mel Brooks, Brooks. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, so I couldn't do it. So that was, that was a stump to me. But the others, again, if I, don't, if I don't think on the right word, I just skip it and do it later, you know, doing something else. Yeah. Tony G? Yes. I have a small query. Like yes. Sergio has also, uh, you know, uh, been into the medium of animation where his right. characters have come alive. So is there any difference when you have that uh, additional element of movement? Like so far, you've, you've not even used words. You've gone totally, you know, pantomime and still images. When you go into moving images with words, like how does that change of medium help? Uh, what well, new, new stuff does it bring to you? Animation is not, uh, th there's a few animators who are themselves, they think the idea, they draw themselves and they are recognized by what they do as a single author. There's an American guy, which again, at my age, I keep forgetting the names, but he's a very good animator who does these things that he changes the faces and it goes. And Is that Bill Plimpton? Bill Plimpton. Bill, Mr. Plimpton, yes. yes, yes. Uh, 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 how you call it? Uh, uh, Plimpton G. Plimpton G. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he is just amazing man. Uh, he, he, he can do all that by himself. And there was in the beginning people, like they did a the thing with a dinosaur. He created all. He sat there and did thousands of. Right. Harry Hosson. No, no, Vincent McKay. Vincent McKay. Vincent oh, McKay. McKay. Okay. So that can be done. But animation is a, a group work. Like this, you can do it better and you can do more complicated things. Uh, I, I love the, the, the animation that Bible sent me about the little orange little thing, uh -huh. big chase. That Not was so clever. <laughs> yeah. Was that written by you? Yes, and our colleagues, uh, we had pitched that idea to Cartoon Network. But that was fantastic. I mean, each one was better than the other one. I says, okay, that, that'll be the last. No, there's another one. <laughs> because it's about the same thing. It was really exceptional. I realized that the voices are like the minions, you know, like <laughs> the, the minion type of voices. But uh, it was great, great animation. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, going to back what I did. I have always used somebody else too. When I did animation for a show called Laughing, it was a very popular uh, show in television called Laugh In with many actors about comedies and that. So I was hired to do the, some of the writing with a pantomime actors. 
and uh, and the, pan, uh, the things to divide the shows. And I hired a gentleman who eventually became the owner of his own company called Hoyt Yateman, excellent animator, but special effect man. He had a company called, uh, uh, I forget the name. <laughs> uh, so, but he did what's called front screen projection. You know, you have the, the film and then you have the characters in it. And then you rotoscope each character. So you can put it on the, on the movie. So we did a, a animation for that. And the reason I hired this is I want you to teach me everything about animation. So we have to do all kinds of animation. I had carte blanche to do anything I wanted. So I learned uh, with little figurines moving. I, I lead people on animation. I did animation by itself. And it worked great. I learned a lot and we did it, but it was a col collaborative effort. Right, right, right. The, the style was my style, of course. Right. And then I did a, a show called TV Bloopers and Practical Jokes. Mm -hmm. That was a, a very small, little small segments to divide the parts of the show. Right. And the way we work that, I will have a meeting Friday with the producers. They told me what they needed. I will go home work Friday night, do a little few second segments. I will go to an animation studio and uh, they will time it for me because I didn't have the time to, which is the most important part of animation is your timing. So I will draw it straight. You know, the guy will, will, will walk and do something, no timing and they will time it. They will say, oh, this two doesn't work. You need five more here and blah, 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 this doesn't work. But by, by the mid Saturday, we had it sales and color. Then it went uh, filmed, transfer, and Monday I delivered. So oh. Friday to Monday. Wow, that's fast. All the segments. <laughs> but it was all the people working together, right. you know? Right. And it was a lot of fun. So I've done a few things. I did some titles for Mexico for a movie, two movies of the, of the same characters. But you, you know, they, they are the introduction of the like the Pink Panther type of thing. So that worked very nice. So and, you've, uh, got, you've got some uh, tribute to you. I'm going to show it on my phone. I don't know whether you guys can see it. That is uh, Weber More, uh, one of the uh, one of a brilliant, uh, you know, artists, animated <laughs> animation directors. Wow. Yes. Wow. <laughs> well, that's, very good. well and, that's me and my pens. Yes. yes, that's you and your pens. And we've got uh, PJ who has sent another one. Uh, I don't know whether this is visible. Oh, oh. I, am an, I am an old, <laughs> I'm an old fan. Look at that. Yes, very good. Tony, you just hold it there. Yes, I'm spotlighting you. Very good. And I see my t shirt too. Yes. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, so, some, more, some more questions. So, Sergio, how are you on time? I know time has flown today. and uh, I have plenty of uh, time, so you want to continue, please. All right, lovely, <laughs> excellent. So here goes, there, there's some lovely more questions for you. Well, let me show you before you continue. Oh, let yes, me please, show you. please, please, please. Sergio, we also... We, we, you this to, is just... Yes. We no, also no, want no. to see you draw something. You know, we yes. want to see that sure, ink sure. pen in action whenever you... Sure, sure, sure. No problem. Uh, all this is only two issues of glue. All the process. Oh. It has. That is awesome. The first. I'm out. Oh, no, 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 you're there. No, no. Uh, first, glue. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, Slightly higher. Yes, oh, perfect. Perfect. Yes, Lighting yes, perfect. perfect. No. I write it like this, you know, first right. word, okay. word, words of what's going to happen, you know, words, words, what's going to happen, what's going to happen. Wow. Then from there, I draw it in a very quick form, like that, the story. For me, I'm developing what I did before, right? And then I redraw it again this way for Mark. See? Okay. It's the same thing I did before, but now it's clearer on the dialogue. You know, so then I do all that 24 pages like that. And then when that's done, 
it gets done on on the on the on the pages. You know, let me. Lovely, lovely. Thank you, COVID. <laughs> you know, it's such a boon. Then what I do is it, it gets sent to Stan. I drew it in blue pencil and I send it to Stan ah. Sakai. Right. And uh, I'm, I miss a, a when Mark finishes, I'd, I send him those drawing on the paper like that. He sends this, he makes it like this. Okay. And send it to Stan right. to put the dialogues, right? And then Stan, I, I, I draw the page, draw the characters very loose. So Stan send it to me like that. Uh, okay. And then what I do, is I go to that. I put the, the oh. round things. Right. Right. And because Mark changes sometimes the expression of what he says, I change the expression of the guy. So right. then what I do is I start partially inking right. the story. Oh, I have to put this in order later. <laughs> So, sir, is, is it anyway, the same paper um, that then gets? I get pages like this. See? There you go. Wow. And this is a sample with a ship, you know? Uh, wow. Can you be seen? Yes. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes we can. Because <laughs> I don't hear you anymore. You. You don't hear us? No, he has, he, I think he's removed the oh. ear, 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 ear plugs. I don't Does hear it? you. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys don't know how to. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no, I can't hear you. <laughs> Perfect. Anyway, so um, this is how the, the, the whole process gets. So the same page, with, uh, uh, does the same page go back and forth? Do you physically exchange it or, or are they different? Uh, Sheets. No, no, no. From from that from the mo the only time it goes, it goes to stand a physical page so okay. he can letter it. Okay. But then it's for the computer. Ah, oh, okay. Scan it and send it back. And uh, architecture has helped for the for the proportions of buildings and and things like that. You know. Right. But uh, uh, I I was go going to show you. Well, and it goes, it goes on and on, you know. So that's the issue that I'm working on with uh, with the other pages, and then the the comic gets gets done, and once it's all finished, I zero said to have a, a reference and uh, show you some of the pages that I done that, for instance, about battles. Or, and things that happen, you know, like pages like that, you know. Wow. You know, so so what is that ink pen, Sergio, which you use? It's a, I use a Pelicans. Okay. Pelicans and uh, I use this one, which is a, a right. Mont Blanc. It has right. a very thick line, which I like a lot. But now I'm using a little a thing pen called Lame. Okay. Lame. Who are yes. very practical. Lame. But the ink that I use is a Japanese ink. It's quite expensive, but it's so dark and so beautiful. It's called carbon ink. Ah, oh, okay. Wow. Wow. And that's from Japan. But nowadays with a computer, you can ink with a pencil if you feel like it, because then you scan it and tell the scanner, become black, and it becomes black. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Right? I don't understand, but it becomes black. <laughs> so you don't have to worry that much. And uh, also a great advantage with these massive drawings or pages is that I have the originals. Right. And people right. wouldn't like to buy them. And people will exhibit them in museums. Right. And it's, I think, the only 
the only inheritance that I can leave to my family yes. eventually is all these pages. Sergio, there is a museum uh, like in your hometown, right? Like which features yes. your, your work, dedicated to your work. Uh, it did my work. Yes, yes, yes. That was great to see people coming. Oh, this is the page I wanted to show you. That's it, issue number two of Gods Against Guru. Okay. Slightly oh, higher. It? Yes. It's a storm going there. Wow. And then all the gods are watching everything. And that, that's um, many different gods from different regions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lovely. How long Thank did you. it take to do this page? Probably 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> Serves you right. Serves you right, <laughs> Chetan. Chetan serves you right. <laughs> uh, I don't do it all at once. You know, uh, I do a page a day. And then when I finished, I do a little on this. So it will take probably a month. But it doesn't take a month. It will take much less. But I do a little, you know, of, of this face. The telephone rings. I take the page. Oh, hello, Scott. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And I start linking. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go back to my work, you know. But um, uh, I have, I, I, many of these gods are re reference. I go, there's a lady from, from India. Maybe you can recognize. Yes, slightly higher. Uh, little uh, higher. Yes. Hold it a little higher, please. Oh, yes. The, the one that I'm pointing yes, to. Yes, yes, yes. She looks like Durga. You uh, know, slightly I, higher, I, Sergio. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, so I go to the computer says, computer, show me uh, images of I Indian goddesses. <laughs> and there they are, beautiful, oh, magnificent representations. So I take a little of that and, uh, and I put a little, little, little things. I have Ganesha someplace there. I love things like that. But Lovely. So you, you learned from all the cultures, right. you apply them to your work. Uh, this is a god that's basically like like in Bhutan, you know. Right. So it's a, uh, I don't know. Right. Uh, and uh, once uh, you do, then you send these pages to the to the publisher, and the, the comic is done. And what you try to do is try to never to be late, which is what's important. Very true. Because Very they true. have resp responsibilities. Very true. And 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 to draw, and let me just get some pieces of paper. Ah. You can you can continue asking questions. You know, yes. You know. yes. No, I, we will be silent because we want to watch you draw. Watch I I don't know how to uh, how to draw and and do it on the computer. And I remember Sergio has once told us that he does not teach. He doesn't know how to teach. He will learn. He'll keep on learning. Yes. He doesn't like to teach. But I think well, I can uh, uh, echo the sentiments of what PJ has said, that today is uh, Teacher's Day. And uh, I think this is the best celebration of Teacher's Day that we could ever have. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, I can, I can see you work. And I can get you an opinion of where you're going. That I can do very well. I can right. say, well, this is what you should do. Or this is my opinion of where you can go with it. But right. teaching somebody to... To be funny, I cannot do that. I Very don't know true. how. <laughs> Very you know, so, uh, and, and to draw, they say, well, I, I am fast. I can't we do this. Probably like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a tool here that is. A very old invention. It's called a tablet here. <laughs> <laughs> see? You go like this. Can yes. you see? Yes. And, yes, and they say, well, you fast. It says, well, of course. Can you see what I'm doing? Not I yet. haven't done it yet. No, of course not. But can you see the place? You're, you're so yes. fast. We can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to see it again? No, I don't. <laughs> so for, for, for instance, as fast because when I do a presentation or when I'm talking in public, you draw something fast because I've drawn it many times. Yeah, 
Yeah. But as you can see on the drawing, I spent a lot of time drawing. So right, right. That the speed helps you with, with the style. You know, for instance, when they ask you, okay, so they go like this. Wow. Why? Because I, I don't, I've done it a million times, you know? <laughs> I do it much better if I'm doing it over there, but you can see right, basically. Right, right. So this is the guy from from yes. from uh, you know, Is he called Alfred Newman? Alfred Newman, yeah. Newman. See, there, there's no mistakes because you use the mistakes. Right. It's it, there's no uh, so you do that and everybody says, oh, how fast he's. Of course, I've done it a million times. How do you expect? <laughs> you know, and uh, but then grill. Imagine, so simple. You know you. They were like that, and then they had like this. And the swords, uh, not only I learned how to draw Japanese swords, I build a couple of them in miniatures, and I have a few books of how the swords are made. Wow. So I, I'm very familiar with uh, with uh, Japanese uh, weaponry. Right. And some of your, you know, wow, those accessories they wear have intricate carvings on them. I'm sure you must have carved them yourself in, in wood as well. <laughs> I have done a few. I have a few swords too uh, that I bought in Japan, of course. <laughs> wow. But th basically that, that will be Gu and going fast. And uh, Ruferto will be something. Can you see that? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Could, could be something. By the way, Ruferto, the guy who is the company of Gu, it's a, it's my dog. It was my dog. <laughs> okay. He lasts 20 years, so wow. that's his Ruferto. Hello, doggy. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Well, it's like doing a storyboard for animation, you know, you right. just go on and, and draw whatever you feel like it. Ah, you know? uh, so it's something that comes natural and, and you do right. it. The more you do it, the, the right. better you become at it. There's no, right. no right. mystery on right. that, you know. Right. I think I have a picture of my dog. Wait. Oh, no, it's oh, too wow. complicated to me. I just want to <laughs> add that, you know, uh, Sergio also has an award named after him and he's also the founder of caps <laughs> which is which is the comic art professional society that also is like a voluntary society where you know all the artists uh, sergio wanted uh, there were a lot of rules which were sorted for certain uh, fields like animation had its own copyrights or you know protection for the artists but in uh, according to sergio uh, in the comic art industry there wasn't uh, enough recognition given to the other artists so, so even to encourage like lettering artists or inking or coloring artists, ah, little higher, that's the little award. Higher, little higher, sir. That's uh, the award. Little, you could you could move a little back. You could move back a little bit. Caps. Yes. Wow. Yes. Oh, that's him. Awesome. And that's uh, that. It was carved, and that's supposed to be me. Hello, see, hey. <laughs> and and I have a pen, and yes. in my back pocket, I have a mad magazine. <laughs> oh, oh, lovely. Lovely. <laughs> so he has my, my ponytail. They have a ponytail. You know? Right. <laughs> so, so you, did you, well, did you carve welcome this to one the show, one? Sergio. Yeah, there's huh? one more. Tony G, once more. Wait, I'll spotlight you. Tony G. Ah, ah. very good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mine was rush, but. Uh, <laughs> I had to have it a little shorter. <laughs> one, one day I'll be G and I'll have it longer. <laughs> <laughs> Sergio G. Uh, Sergio, yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a lovely question here, which I, you know, you've talked so much about all the people that you've collaborated with. So uh, give us a little insight on the relationship between an artist as a cartoonist and uh, a writer. I mean, is there anything that cartoonists uh, should... Uh, if they're not writing their own stuff, or even if they are writing and they're, pub and they're sending it out for publication, obviously there's going to be a lot of to and fro that happens. So, uh, well, yes, um, it relationship with, with people are very important in the sense that 
if you are very good at drawing and you are not very good at writing, you should take writing lessons or if you think that it will be easier for you to draw all the time and have, find a good writer. Don't find a friend, find a good writer. Because if he's not as good as you are, you are depending on friendship instead of the quality of the work. You become friends later because it's a very close relationship. You know, you work together and you become good friends. And in case with Mark and I, we work together in so many play, things and that, you know, and he's like a brother of mine. I love that man dearly because he, he's sensational. He, he understands me better than my wife, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just uh, sensational. And uh, if you're a very good writer, don't draw anything. You're not an artist. Look for a good artist that represents what you're writing. Not, not your friend or your neighbor that is your buddy. Oh, you draw, that's a very good drawing. You draw my... No, no, don't ruin your writing. You can ruin a career by using a friend. That is not that good. Okay. But if he's a very good, yes, please do. I'd rather have a... But you have to be a good artist or a good writer. So you make a team. And if you see that you work together very well without any discrepancies, that everything is like one, then you have it. You know, and uh, if you don't want to have a partner, if you are a very good artist, learn how to write. And uh, if you think that you can draw well, well, practice more what you are not good at. And eventually you can have it, you know. I, uh, it is very hard for me to write words. Right. right. Because I really don't have the time to compose or to go through a vocabulary to express what I can express with a drawing. That's what I do. And that's what Mark is indispensable for Gru. He, he had made all the, the words that Gru has. Uh, and that written humor that I don't possess, much, le much less in English, you know? So that was, a, I, I couldn't do it on English, you know? Oh, and that's another carving I have. I have this one hanging on my lamp. Oh. Can you see it? Yes, 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 yes. lovely. Sergio, what is the time there right now? Over there? Yes. I, it's 11 o'clock. So we have another <laughs> hour. <if you> want. <laughs> but, but no, we, I, I don't think we should, we should, you know, keep you. It's 12 o'clock. Ah, yes. yes. So it, it, it's, we have a special, like we planned last time. PJ is going to play happy birthday to you it's it's sergio's ah, birthday now and, no, and so yeah. guys yeah we can actually unmute a lot of you so we can all uh, sing and uh, play together a very happy birthday to sergio yes oh. so oh. Yeah, awesome. to sergio. <laughs> on the count of one you two, give it pj <laughs> Lovely, lovely, lovely. Lovely, lovely. That was superb. Yes. What a sweet one. I saw very little, but I feel so privileged. Oh. Who is this? Who is this? Yeah, happy birthday, sir. <laughs> okay, let me very, very quickly. Oh, wow. Let me see. Like Let's see oh, that. Like okay. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Lovely, lovely. It was painful for you. Amazing, amazing. Okay, I'm going to spotlight everyone very, very quickly. Sergio, you were mentioning something about love for your work. I think we'll be apt to end with that. You know, while I'm, I'm going to spotlight everyone as you, as you, you know, that's Nikhil in the US, right? Hey. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. 
that's vaibhav more who made the first caricature of yours uh, with, the, the, with the pen with the pen <laughs> <laughs> yes. and he's also a committee member of of uh, the animation society of india you've met uh, mona mona yes thank you yes. hi mahipal hi. Oh. oh from mumbai the phantom you you <laughs> like the phantom huh <laughs> who does it when i when in tero when i visit uh, bhutan i went to visit the high lama and in one of the, the uh, on the, the zone that where he lived many floors away and uh, in the back he had cut out little strips of the phantom <laughs> and to me that was amazing that the leader the religious leader of a whole country his inspiration was the phantom yeah amazing wow. Amazing. Yes. Lovely. More people. More people. Yes. More, more people, people. coming so up. Weber, coming Weber up. Weber, go, go <laughs> for it. I'll, I'll do. I'll do that. I'll do that. Uh, technology. Somebody has Alfred Newman on the back. That's Manish, the creator. <laughs> yes. The Amul butter campaign in in India so so popular. Love your uh, work, Manish. Love your work. We we must do a session with you uh, as well. Uh, <laughs> that that would be really awesome. Well, thanks, tell them thanks, to uh, to to live with this one. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Hello. Pr- Pratek. Hi. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Sorry, Hi, I'm, I told you. Guys, I'm I'm you're, going you're, I'm going you're. one by one on the gallery view so I'm I'm struggling here a bit and wow there is a lovely uh look at this. Dapun. <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> Sergio <laughs> G. You've been Sergio, baptized. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> Officially baptized. But Dapun can you oh, show your goodness. face? Yes. Thank you. Hi. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And there is Shaibani. Shaibani. Oh. Hi, Shaibani. Hi, Shaibani. Nice to see you here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Who is this? That's Pushkar. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh. oh, Pushkar is from. Okay, so, so whoever Shukriya, had their friend. their camera on, um, you are you missed uh, Mayur, I think. Uh, let me yeah, see if Mayur I can. Missed. I can uh, spotlight. Oh it. yes, everybody's switching on their cameras now. That's lovely. That's <laughs> Sukhana. She's an animation student from Kolkata. Ah, very glad to meet you. <laughs> And keep working, keep working. That's the 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 the, the secret. Yes, <laughs> never another, give up. Is another mad guy on screen? Saksham Arora. Hi, Saksham. There's another. Glad to meet you. That's your artwork. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> I, you know, much I couldn't see it that well. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Hey, there's another artwork which I'm going to spotlight right now. That's by Saksham. Oh, live as you uh, were speaking. <laughs> yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Saksham. Saksham there, is, there is Stanley, who I'm going to. Spotlight, right? That's a lovely young girl. So, yo, that's that's all mad. Wow, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's all mad. You. <laughs> Thank you for all the wonderful drawings <laughs> that you've done. The way you entertained us so Thank many you, years. Thank, Thank you so you. much. You. That's party. Party. Hello. <laughs> party. <laughs> And there is Senjuti. Sanjuti Chakraborty Chakraborty Yes Chakraborty I'm a student as well this is so good thank you so much for this Thank you my pleasure thank you. I'm I'm glad you enjoy you guys There's Orgo once again he's he's the yes, teacher of some of the students uh, we saw Very And long. back Quite to Chetan and Gayatri Yes yes Ah oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely Sergio G, yo. How you doing? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Did you enjoy the scenes with Guru that I show? They were brilliant, Obviously. and I would just love to see them in person. They're just mind blowing. I cannot, I will, I will not be talk, stopping talking about this for I don't know how long. <laughs> it's, it's a blessing. I can't say that's oh, anything you. less than a blessing. Okay, thank you so oh, much. Thank you. My pleasure, my pleasure, son. <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> So you I think you know you you taken out so much time and and thank you so much uh, I know you're not tired at all <laughs> no, I, as soon as as we finish I just continue working wow, wow. but today you know, won't there no. be 
numerous messages pouring in now and you know won't you be bombarded with phone calls and from relatives friends all I don't answer I don't answer them <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. I don't answer I I have a list of the of the people that I have to talk and the rest I'm sorry I cannot really do wow. it because there's so many from all over you know. okay so But, I think um, I should very quickly spotlight Manish again because he has written something for you so manish you are in in spotlight yeah, I'm, I'm but in space, correct uh, in I, i'll do it that's okay uh, yeah i know I'll, i'll i'll read it out okay. so this is a tribute to uh, sergio inspired by frank jacobs on teachers oh. day we were blessed to have dear sergio as our guest with the maddest of the mad so many laughs we have had here's to the fastest draw in the west thank you oh, very oh, much yeah. sergio <laughs> woo thank you <laughs> thank you thank you But it's not the fastest. That's just for show. Yeah, <laughs> okay, the best draw in the West. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. My friends, my friends. So, well, Tony G, it was a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me with you. Uh, well, with you Sergio blue. G, uh, I think uh, we can officially call <laughs> us, uh, you know, uh, you Sergio G, and you deserve the moniker more than anyone else that I know. Definitely oh, not no. me. Okay. Uh, absolute, absolute pleasure to have had you here with us, and we would love to have uh, more such sessions with you in the future. Uh, let uh, let whatever you have shared with us today let that sink in because I think people are still going to uh, take some time to get over the initial shock uh, <laughs> for all the exciting stuff that you have shown, and for it to like kind of settle down. And actually, uh, I think I know a lot of us must be pinching ourselves, uh, you know, saying, uh, "Have I really been in this meeting with Sergio?" And I, you know, so. <laughs> Uh, oh. let's not let's not uh, you know uh, tempt fate uh, let's not uh, uh, g- give an opportunity to weak hearts to kind of uh, you know give way uh, let's let's uh, recuperate a little from this fantastic session that you have oh, given thank us you. today thank you Sam, thank you thank you so much well and don't forget that you can watch many things more like in in uh, youtube they have a lot of interviews that i done with with um uh Uh, 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 oh my God, um, Stan Stanley, he did an interview, a long one, and and that was a very good one. And I did, I gave a lecture in um, with. Um, uh, oh, I, I'm so happy with you guys. I my mind is. <laughs> so uh, it is a lot of things that, that that you can continue watching and watching, you know. And again, Bahut Sukriya. ंग <laughs> in whatever way like if you want to recommend other friends that you know that should definitely we should view their journeys please do share you know uh, your colleagues or people that you admire you know we would want to have them okay. on board well, as well we'll do this uh, in a, a, in a couple of years again to see where our careers are going yes we will yes we will and, and uh, we we really really look forward to that Thank you once again. You have a wonderful, wonderful birthday and a wonderful Hello. life. Uh, uh, going strong uh, at a young age of eighty-three. Live long. To make us Sergio. Yes. <laughs> Salute, Sergio. Salute, Sergio. From all live long. Hi, Sergio. From all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for everybody uh, out here, thank you once again. Uh, uh, I know this was absolutely on the money. Uh, brilliant, brilliant session. What a for the fantastic artist. and uh, what infectious energy i mean uh, he's he's kind of given us a reason and hope and excitement Exc- to you know get get cracking and get back at uh, you know whatever we love to do uh, so thank you once again the recording of this session is going to be on youtube so please feel free to share it and do spread the word about the animation society of india so that uh, and of course uh, some of you here uh, uh, where is my friend galaxy galaxy we need you here back on earth <laughs> uh, we want to do a session with you and uh, webov ji i mean that's on you now you have to somehow chase yes. this star and uh, get him uh, you know to come and share his work sure with us definitely definitely i'm trying to find where is manish manish are you there your galaxy yeah, 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 there i'm there i'm there ah yes 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 
Uh, yes, we'll coordinate with Manish definitely. And like another very very important announcement, equally exciting. Please block nineteenth of September because another amazing yes. person is going to join us, and his name happens to be Peter Lord from oh. Artman Studios. Yeah, bad. He will be sharing his journey with us on the nineteenth of September. So we will share the details very very soon. So we are hoping that you know we have this lovely experience with these beautiful people from all across the globe and no you know jai corona for that <laughs> <laughs> yes i i just like to sign off with one request i know there are some fantastic uh, you know accomplished artists here and this is all about community this is what community is all about and uh, you know we would love to uh, for you rather than us a few of us you know try are mad enough to kind of uh, spend time effort energy to uh, find out who are the people that we want to uh, bring on board and uh, provide the platform ultimately this belong i mean this this society belongs to the community and uh, if you have something that you would like to share if you feel that there is something that you can uh bring out there what people can learn enjoy uh, you know an experience please uh, get in touch with us uh, we'll organize a session that's the least that we can do uh, i think uh, it's a huge learning experience for all of us and we all get to learn something or the other so if you have friends if you want to do it yourself if you know of someone who's you know hidden away in some hole somewhere and you want to pull that chap out please feel free you are all ambassadors of the community uh, uh, you know let's let's get this thing rolling let's make the best of uh, you know sharing and uh, getting together so thank you once again uh, big pranam to all of you uh, and we hope and to thank see you pj again. yes the amazing you, amazing lovely <laughs> lovely number <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, and do send so your do send your feedback in. Uh, yeah. Please write to us. Our our details are on our website. Write to us. Uh, give us our, give us your feedback. Anything you want us to improve on, uh, we are in the same boat as you are. So uh, you know, web of big pranam. Starting. Also, a big pranam to all the teachers who are here today, who have joined us here today. There are a lot of them who are into yes. active teaching. So, uh, our guru pranam, please. And uh, like do keep blessing. <laughs> and Manish, we'll chase you for your session. Maybe yes. in next month after after Peter, you know, we'll 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 slot it in uh, on one of the Saturdays. Yes, and you know, you've seen uh, the session today. We are lucky that you are here because uh, one of the impressions that people have is that you know these uh, the webinars are very protocol driven and they are you know people with the uh, choked up necks and you know ties and collars and that kind of stuff. No, this is I'm I'm sitting chaddi mein baithe hain idhar. and uh, you know it's an informal session uh, so long as you know it's upwards from here it's fine uh, you know it's an open platform uh, the idea is to share the idea is to uh, encourage uh, you know art in any form uh, technology art craft whatever anything that's related to what excites us so even if you have somebody who's a musician and wants to come and talk about music let's go for it you know so let uh, let the animation society of india not mislead uh, you in the objective by just the name uh that's just what we are stuck with so uh have a great day all of you lovely weekend what a way to kick start it i'm i'm like super stoked please, please. thank you so much thank you so much bye bye everyone bye 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 thank you bye 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 bye